Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Today we're going over the top 10 best unique items that you need to get in Lost Epoch and also why they are so crazy good to have. So let's start with the first item on the list which is called Atrophy. A unique glove that is used by a lot of damage of time builds and not a surprise as it gives up to 25% penetration against all resistance for damage of time. Penetration subtracts from resist, causing a source of damage to deal more damage and with the base as well, providing some extra cost speed, uh, this is usually used by caster builds. And uh, here we can also get some extra benefits like slow on hit, increased duration and if you go with a time rod build from the Void Knight for example, here we can get some extra duration from this as well. On number 9 we have Death Rattle and this unique amulet is for your minion players out there. And with its unique modifiers up to 100% minion critical strike multiplier. A must have if you really want to push the damage of your minion build. The base as well have some benefits for minions, we have some increased damage and also some extra crit chance. On the negative side your minions will take up to 30% increased damage from this amulet as well. And then we also have regain 30 health on minion death and this can be used in some different builds like the forge guard with its forge weapons or the druid with vines uh, as those two when you overextend their max limits counts as them dying. On the 8th place we have peak of the mountain and this unique helm is a huge boost of damage for a lot of builds. This helm can get up to 290% increased critical strike chance which is just absolutely insane. In some cases you will only need this helm to get yourself to 100% crit chance which open up a ton of free modifiers on the rest of your items. The downside of the item is that you cannot leech health from critical strike chance which is usually the two main things you want to go for for your build to really shine which is crit and leech. Uh, however there are other ways to sustain your life some builds use regen, like with the Shattered Lance set, or if you maybe go with Ward as your main source of defense, uh, this helm can be a huge addition for your build. It's also really easy to target farm this, as it's the most common drop from the end boss in Lightless Arbor Dungeon. On number 7 we have Frostbite Shackles, and these gloves are mainly used for builds using Frostbite as their main damage source, but the really nice thing here is uh, going to be the 1% ward retention per 1% uncapped cold resist. In uh, Lost Epoch we have ward which is a temporary sh magic shield that protects your health. And uh, this is also decaying slowly and ward retention makes this decay uh, go even slower. As an example, if you have 200% ward retention, this will cause our ward to last twice as long. Uh, 400 retention is three times as long and so on. And with these gloves we can get tons of cold resist to boost this number up. Uncapped cold resist means all that are above the max which is at 75%. And the gloves also opens up a lot of different build options if you want to go for a ward as your main source of defense for classes that not usually have any source of ward retention uh, like the primalist or the sentinel for example. On number 6 we have Throne of Ambition and this is a unique idol which is specially used for any fire or coal damage build. From this we gain a stack of ambition when you hit a boss or rare enemy and for each of these stacks we get 2% more damage for fire and coal and also 2% armor uh, as well for some extra defense. And we can have up to 20 maximum stacks of ambition which will grant us a total of 40% damage and armor in total uh, which is really really great. The reason why this is strong is from the more aspect of this item as it multiply your damage. Different sources of more damage also multiply off each other so you can't really have enough of it. You will lose all stack of ambitions if you go 4 seconds without getting a stack so being a fast build do help out here a bit of maintaining your stacks as there is a 1 second cooldown on gaining a stack. And uh, lastly having multiple of these idols do not stack with each other so getting one is uh, going to be enough. 
on number five we have the Mad Alchemist Ladle and this is a unique wand and uh, when you first look at it it doesn't really look too impressive of an item but I can guarantee you that it's a really strong one. The base overall is a low tier one and can be used as soon as level 17. And we get five different sorts of applying ailments here. We have Slow, Freighty, Armor Shred, Electrify and Poison. And then we get to the strength of this item which is the 8% more spell damage per negative ailment on a target. More is going to multiply the damage and from this one we are getting a 40% multiplier from our five ailments alone here. In Lost Epoch there are a lot of different ailments that you can get. First we have all the damage types elements like poison or ignite. Then we also have utility ones like shield or slow. And we also have shred for each element. And the list just goes on. Usually it's not a problem of getting like 10 plus of these elements at least which will boost the damage by a ton for your bills. One great source of getting those ailments is going to be from your blessings and here you have 5 different zones that you can get your ailments from. That's an easy 40% more damage just by using that. As mentioned before, the base is quite low so you won't get as much added flat spell damage from uh, the wand as you would from a normal uh, high tier one. So do keep that in mind if you don't have uh, any spell damage to scale from. Where this item really shines is with spells that have high base spell damage like Meteor or some of the runic invocations. Some classes can also dual wield with a sword and uh, the swords can actually have flat spell damage on them and uh, at the same time we can also get some extra source of ailments here as well. On number 4 we have the Titan Hearth and this unique body arm is really good to use both for melee and caster builds with its unique modifier 15% less damage taken while wielding a two-handed melee weapon. 15% less damage is uh, really helpful when you are getting into the later part of the game as enemies start to deal more damage to you. There's no cap on less damage taken but all sources of it are multiplicative uh, with each other so basically the more you have of it uh, more of its value is going to be lost. Just a quick example here, let's say you take a hit of 100 damage and then we take 15% uh, less from the chest and then we have another 20% from our passives and then also 40% from our endurance and this will make us take around 41 damage of the initial hit of 100. So basically you can't get 100% less damage taken and just get immune to all damage. Uh, so that's basically how it's calculated but less damage is always going to be good to have and with the chest you also need a two-handed melee weapon and this applies to Kosser as well as most of the staffs that we can use here have actually melee damage on them. Uh, at the moment there are currently only one without it and that's the temple staff base and the same goes for uniques that have the temple staff as its base as well. The chests also provide a huge boost to increase health up to 40% and it's also quite common to drop with legendary potential on it. If you are lucky you can also get up to a extra 36% increased health on top of the 40 making it a absolutely beast of a body armor. The downside is that you cannot regen health when you're using the body armor so you will have to work around that. Usually it's not a problem as most builds use leech to sustain their health either way. Moving on to the third place we have the Yulra's Obsession and uh, these gloves are in high demand for most of minion builds. Stats on this item can also be applied to your minions. The gloves as they are provide some different resist and also some extra spell damage here uh, which is nice of course but the real power from these gloves comes from uh, when you get a legendary potential on them. The gloves when they drop is uh, always guaranteed with at least one LP on it uh, with a chance of more of course but that's quite rare. Some of the more normal stats that you want to go for here is going to be attack or cost speed, critical strike chance and also the one that stands out is going to be chance to shred armor on hit. And uh, why is this so good you might ask. Well, how armor works in Lost Epoch is that it mitigates the damage you take from all hits. 
and when we shred armor on enemies, it will reduce the armor by 100 per stack on that target, which will make us deal more damage. When we combine this with the gloves, this will now also apply to our minion hits. Builds like Wraths or Squirrels, where we have a lot of minions out and they usually deal damage quite fast, we can get hundreds of armor stacks within seconds, which is really really good for us. On the second place we have the Bleeding Heart Amulet. And the power of this amulet is no joke, and I'm almost always using this on all of my builds while leveling up at least. With its unique modifier up to 9% of damage leashed as health, this is really huge and helps out a lot with survivability for tons of builds. And uh, this modifier also leads from damage over time effects as well, which is quite rare to get. It's usually used for melee or throw builds, as we get some of the attack speed from the base here itself, but it's quite uh, common to use as a caster build as well. The Bleeding Heart will inflict you with bleed stacks when you cast a spell, so do keep that in mind. However, a lot of beasts do have elements removal to counter this, or it's just leeching so much health that you won't even be noticing the bleeding. And this works great as a leveling item, as well as it does for the end game, with its low effective level of legendary potential, which makes it quite common to drop with more than one LP on it, so you could add some more modifiers that your build needs and it also drops quite frequently as well. And lastly, the number one item that you want to get in Last Epoch is going to be the Twisting Heart of Ukros. If you played Last Epoch before, this will probably not be a big surprise for you. The unique relic is really one of a kind. First of all, so much modifiers that benefit basically any caster build. The base alone gives up to 20% increased health, it got cost speed, plus one to level of necrotic and also elemental skills. And then we have a percent of current health convert to ward when you directly cast a necrotic or elemental spell. And this is really strong when you combine this with the damage leech as health, like the bleeding heart amulet for example uh, that we previously mentioned. We also have prism wraps or the burning avarice as another leech source from an item. You can also go with the Hungering of the Void Blessing from the Black Sun timeline, which gives up to 5% of spell damage leash as health. So by using the Relic, this will convert a percent of health to ward, and then we leech back life from another source, and with this loop we'll generate tons of ward as defense for us. And this item is basically a must have for any caster build. As a bonus item, I would like to add Revenous Void on the list as well. And these are a pair of gloves that are quite unique and can be really powerful. Uh, the base alone gives a lot of defense with armor, vitality and increased health. And on top of that we also have additional layers of defense with uh, less void damage taken, up to 15% uh, physical damage taken as a void and some flat endurance. And where these gloves shine is uh, for its modifier that grant us a stack of void barrier every 5 seconds while above endurance threshold. Each of these stacks makes us take 5% less damage for a total of 15% here and the same as mentioned earlier with the Titan Heart, this is going to be multiplicative with other modifiers. Dropping below your Endurance Threshold doubles all stack of Void Barrier for 3 seconds, allowing you to exceed the normal maximum. After that, all stacks of Void Barrier are converted to Mimic Feast, and each of these feasts deals 200 Void Damage of time to you per stack, and will disable Void Barrier Generation and also Health Leech, which is going to be the negative side of this item, but this counts as an element and therefore can be cleansed as well, so that's a must have if you are going to use this item. If you don't have any removal on your build, using a element cleansing on potion use on your belt will do the trick here. The class that usually uses this item is going to be the Void Knight, as it gets the damage from Vitality and more specific used mostly for the Auto Bomber build. These gloves are very rare to drop and that's why I didn't want to put them on the tier list, but I thought they were absolutely worth of mentioning. 
all right today we have my top 10 best uniques that i think you need to have in last epoch do you agree with these items or do you have another one that you feel deserve a spot on this list please leave a comment below for others to share thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and with that said i'll see you in the next one bye